new wave began in the 1950s and 60s when British filmmakers started to break the mould and film in a more documentarian style. It, it only really started to become a massive deal when Tony Richardson uh, directed the film Look Back in Anger in 1959. It broke the mould in a way and it instigated a new way of looking at character within film. It depicted the main protagonist in the way of the angry young man, which was a new movement popularised in theatre in Britain. Um, the men who were writing the plays at the time were viewed as such, really. Uh, you know, they were angry at the way that Britain was being run at the time, uh, and, and they wanted to sort of break free from the classical format that they were being preached to when it comes to creative, uh, well, whether it be theatre or film or, or books or writing or whatever it may be, they wanted to break free from the, the, the overall conventions that were being held in Britain at the time. The early days of the British New Wave movement went on to inspire a lot of British filmmakers that we've come to know and appreciate, such as Ken Loach and Mike Lee and Alan Clark, who uh, defined British realism during the, the, the late 70s, early 80s and even the 90s. But I'm not here to talk generally about the history of uh, British realism, although I would love to. I'm here to guide new viewers into what they should be watching should they want to get into British realism. Uh, so without further ado, here we go. You coming? We can. I know somewhere we can get some drink. Yeah, you're 15 years old. What does it matter if you like someone? The first film I wanted to recommend was is quite a recent film. It's from 2009. It's directed by Andrea Arnold, titled Fish Tank. It stars quite a young-looking Michael Fassbender, and. Um, this film really resonated with me. I, I feel like they really depicted the uh, idea of um, British poverty um, very, very well in a way that not a lot of films are able to do. I feel like they captured the essence of, of being a sort of teenager in Britain during this time period, not having a lot of money growing up around maybe the wrong sort of people, having the wrong sort of mindset about relationships and the way that you should act as a, as a young person. Um, this is really a good step into British realism because it, it, it allows you to cement those conventions into your head early on about what British realism is really about, which is about capturing British lifestyle, whether it be uh, in the 70s uh, or, or in, in the early uh, to mid 2000s, which is where this film is based. Um, I feel like it really allows you to connect with, with, with Britain, if you're not from here especially, and, and it allows you to move on from there. Um, and it obviously helps that it's a very, very good film. It's a very entertaining watch. It's, you know, it's, it's one of those films that, that the star power of Michael Fassbender really, really draws you in. And the writing by Andrea Arnold is fantastic. It really makes you feel like you're there in this uh, estate with this, with this troubled young woman. Um, and it's a fantastic story. I, I urge you to check it out. Um, if, if you know, if, and again, uh, like my previous video, I'll link all the films into the description. A legal way to watch them, um, and yeah, I mean, you can go check them out there. Another great one for beginners is Kez by Ken Loach, film about a young boy and a falcon or an eagle. I forget the bird, so I'll put it on the screen what bird it is in case anyone cares. Um, yeah, really lovely story about a young boy. It's a very famous British uh, realism film um, from the very early days. I think 1969 was when it was released. And um, it really, again, helps you set the tone of what British realism really is. It really captures the genre uh, in a way that no one else really can. Uh, obviously, Ken Loach is one of the godfathers of British realism. Man. And if you're interested in the genre at all, you'll know the name. And his name will come up a fair bit uh, as we go along and talk about um, other films that you may be interested in watching. But Kez is a great one to start on. I think um, it's what most people will recommend you start on when talking about British realism and talking about the different conventions of British realist cinema. Um, so yeah, Kez, fantastic film to watch. Um, and again, it's where one of the godfathers of British realism really started to stake his name uh, within British cinema. So to start off with you, I, 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 to start off with, I should say, I would definitely recommend Fish Tank by Andrea Arnold and Kez by Ken Loach. The next films I'm going to be recommending are films by my one of my favourite filmmakers, uh, Alan Clark, who specifically directed uh, made-for-TV films uh, in Britain in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, I, I recommend you watch these movies after you've watched the previous two, as the 
previous two really do give you that intro you need for British realist, realist films. Uh, but these films afterwards really do help you dive more into the niche when it comes to British realism and helps you um, understand maybe some of the subcultures involved in Britain, especially uh, during the 80s and 90s. The first one I'm going to recommend to you is Scum by Alan Clark. It released in 1979. It was originally banned in Britain due to violence and uh, a multitude of other things. But um, the film is about a, a young boy who is put into a borstal is essentially a young offenders institute and he has to become top dog in this uh, institution in order to gain some respect from his peers and in order to run the place um, it's sort of his idea of uh, being top of the world essentially because this is where he is spending all of his time therefore it is his world and if he can become you know very powerful in this small little world he will have accomplished something now the film is uh, very much like a character study in the same essence as say american psycho or bronson or any of these other big character study films it's really about ray winston's character and how the audience perceives him and and the, the, the mental state that he's in and what he's going through as a character and, and it's a very important british film as well because it, it, it makes you understand uh, British culture in a way in, in, in a different way I think um, you know there are there are variations in British culture in the way they're represented on screen uh, a lot of Ken Loach's films are about young working-class families or young working-class men trying to make their way in the life um, a lot of Mike Lee's films are really sort of satirical um, you know Andrea Arnold's film is sort of about a young woman in the same vein as this one but this one is a lot more violent a lot more um, you know outgoing it really show it's not afraid to show the darker side of Britain um, especially during this time period so yeah it's definitely worth a watch I'd say word of caution it can get a bit graphic at times but uh, overall it's a great great watch and again if you're a fan of these sort of big character study films it's definitely worth to watch and Ray Winston is absolutely fantastic in this film and the next Alan Clark film I'm going to recommend is The Firm uh, again, another sort of niche subculture within Britain. It's about a football hooligan firm. It stars a young Gary Oldman. And now, again, this is another one of those films that draws you in with the star power, but ultimately is still, a, to the core, a British realist film about families and life and, and, and violence, especially. And, and again, if you know anything about the football hooliganism, uh, you know, culture especially within the 1980s and the battles they faced with the police and the local government uh, it was a massive ordeal in britain at the time and still is in some places but uh, here it really does showcase the 1980s football hooliganism subculture in a way that no other film for me has captured quite as well and, and again gary oldman is absolutely fantastic in this film it's definitely one to watch again these are two films that i would recommend for you after you watch the original two that i recommend um, that way you've got the uh, the beginnings of realism with like a lot of the 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 nailed down conventions and and the staples of british realism and now you've got a lot of the subculture within britain and a lot of um a lot of, and then a lot of the nuances that you get with these films especially these especially if you're not from britain a lot of the nuances you get with these films you may need um, a little bit of context for which is why i recommend the original two and the next two i think you're going to definitely need to watch um at least the first two in this list um, in order to really get um the full picture from I mean, you don't have to again it's up to you um but you know you'll understand why once i go over them and the last two films i'm going to recommend to you are films by one of my favorite directors of all time mike lee now these films are british realist films but they're very exaggerated in tone they're very satirical they're realist they're realist but they're also for the most part uh, they're they're very they're very comedic films uh, and they and they they dabble in a lot of things that regular realist films would not necessarily consider realism and 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 i think satire is a massive part of mike lee's filmmaking and, and and it really does lend to the realism because it plays up a lot of these key things that you see in british life that you know may need to be played up to a camera and uh, the first one i'm going to recommend to you is a film called high hopes it's uh, one of my favorite films of all time i think it's absolutely fantastic um, it really is a film about working class people about poverty about the thatcher years about politics whilst also touching on family life and relationships and and the way that we treat elderly people it really does have this amount of range in it and i feel like it really does touch upon everything um that makes britain britain 
and I think it is really one of those cornerstone key British realism films that that people need to see. I really think it's it's one of those masterpieces that a lot of people do underlook, and I feel like it's one of Mike Lee's best. In, in, opinion, in my opinion, it is his best work, and I, and I thoroughly, really enjoy it. And this is just me wholeheartedly recommending you watch this film. But I, I do feel like it may need a bit of context, especially if you're not from Britain, in order to get that satire into what, in, in order to understand maybe some of the political uh, discussions or, or, or the political jokes going on in the film as well. So, yeah, high hopes uh, from Mike Lee. And the last one I want to talk to you about, but certainly not least, is Naked by Mike Lee. Now this is one of those films that's Lynchian in the way that it's represented, but it's also very real and very raw. David Thewlis' character isn't what you necessarily uh, imagine as British realism, but his character really represents uh, sort of us as the audience walking through the British streets like a ghost and sort of engaging with these di different people from different walks of life. And and, and, and it's the way that it's represented, I mean, it, it, it's, it's like no other British film really has represented Britain before. It, it, it's in another world. It's, it's very otherworldly in the way that it's portrayed, and it's very satirical such as uh, Mike Lee's previous works and, and again it's one of those very well high regarded films that a lot of people love and a lot of people consider as Lee's you know finest piece of filmmaking the Criterion, uh, Criterion Collection has released it rather and uh, again it is very very high regarded within both audiences and critics so uh, if you haven't already seen Naked I, I highly suggest that you do it's not something I can really put into words you really have to watch it for the atmosphere alone I think you know the acting is fantastic and it's one of those things where it's, it's really an experience that gets into your skin that's one thing I can always say about Naked is that it gets under your skin and, and it makes you feel um, very strange I think again it's a very otherworldly experience watching Naked you're watching a British realism film and yet you feel oddly it feels oddly alien to you in, in, in an aspect because of the way that David Thewlis is engaging with different people, the way the cameras uh, work, the way the cinematography is, it's, it's the way the music and the soundtrack is, 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 um, is, is played out to you in the film. It really is something else, so I definitely recommend Naked by Mike Lee. So those are the six films that I'm going to be recommending to newcomers of the British realist genre. Um, again, if you've got any other recommendations, please you know feel free to put them in the comments. There's, there's thousands of films that I could have talked about today. You know, there's thousands of films that I love, but I, I thought I'd recommend these ones as a starting jumping off point into the genre, one of my favourite genres personally, and something I hold hold quite dear to my heart. So uh, if you've enjoyed the video, um, let me know. Again, again, I hope to be uh, releasing more videos um, in the, this year or in, in the next year coming. Um, so yeah, I've been Jody Williams and I'll see you next time.